Hey guys, well it's Tuesday afternoon and it is too smoky out here in Oregon for me to be working out in the woods. Uh, we've got a lot of wildfires going on and there's just too much smoke for me to actually do my normal drone work. So I'm out here in the shop this afternoon and I uh, thought I'd set up the camera. I'm kind of I'm in between jobs with the CNC table. I uh, just cut a whole bunch of stainless steel hydrant tags out with it and I got a video on that. And then I've also just finished cutting out all the pieces for this bumper I'm working on for my uh, Nissan Frontier. And there's a video coming for that as well. Since I don't have any plans for the CNC table for the next week or two, it's time for me to clean it up. Now this video might not be as exciting. I'm not building anything cool, uh, but I don't know, preventative maintenance is one of those things that goes along with owning a table. So if you guys are thinking about buying one, here's what it takes to clean it up. Okay, as you can see, a lot of these slats are really starting to deteriorate. Now this is pretty inexpensive mild steel. I think it's uh, eighth inch, maybe two inches wide and about three feet long but I live a couple hours away from the closest place to get this. So what I'm gonna do is pull all these slats out and just flip them over, use the flap wheel to clean up the ends here a little bit and we'll get some more life out of them that way. And we're gonna drain all the water out of here and I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but there's a huge amount of this uh, slag and then uh, you know cut ends, a good picture of it. All this stuff's building up in here and it's a combination of aluminum, stainless and mild steel. And, even though the trays are stainless, eventually, if I just leave it in here, there's going to be some uh, galvanic corrosion that occurs and it'll end up eating through the trays. And so this does need to be cleaned out. Uh, so we'll take all this stuff out of here, drain the water, uh, clean all this stuff out. And then uh, I, this is just pure water. And normally I don't let it sit in here for more than a week or two, but I don't have any projects planned here. So it may be sitting for more than that, two or three, four weeks. And so I located a recipe for an anti-corrosion uh, mixture. I'll post a photo of that recipe up here and we're gonna mix some of that up and try it out And I'll post a follow-up video of that here in a couple weeks and we'll see how well it's done at limiting the corrosion inside the water table here Let's get this thing draining. Looks like there's some debris caught in here. Perfect. There she goes. Okay, most of the water's drained out here except for what's basically above this lip right here. And you can see there's a lot of this uh, slurry left over in here. And I suppose there's a few ways to get it out of there, but uh, what I've done, what I'm gonna do here is uh, I pulled the filter out of my shop vac and I'll basically just use the shop vac to kind of suck up this slurry right here and then we'll wash it out afterwards. That's how I've, that's how I've done it the last couple of times. It seems to work pretty good. Okay guys, I got this tray mostly cleaned up here. It's uh, all the crusty stuff's knocked off of the flat surfaces. And uh, I did notice as I was scraping this, uh, you can kind of see here, I put a little bit of silicone around these. They have a rubber gasket, but uh, I definitely noticed that this one was moving on here. And of any place that I expect a leak to show up, I haven't had a problem with it yet, but of, of any place I expect a leak to show up, I would expect it right here. Yeah, so I pulled this bulkhead fitting out. This is what it comes with. And, I mean, these are high-quality bulkhead fittings, but uh, you can see the, the 
lip right here plus the gasket's about a quarter of an inch and you really can't tighten down on it too much or you squish the gasket out so when i put these in i put a little dab of silicone on the, both the bottom and the top and at least they weren't leaking but you just can't tighten them up enough and with that lip here not all of the water drains out of the water table when i drain it so i wasn't going to do anything about it today but changed my mind what i've got is these uh, quarter inch npt uh, nipples right here and i've got a stainless steel washer and this is about the right diameter so i'm going to tig weld this to that washer and then i'm going to take this assembly and put it up from the bottom right here and then i'll tig weld this to that washer and uh, assuming i do a decent job tig welding that will be a bomb proof leak proof way of doing this and then there'll be no lip whatsoever i'll be able to actually drain all the water right down to this surface so let's fire up the tig welder and get to work That went pretty well. I've got this nice flat surface now to butt up against the bottom here. And uh, I've got a nice quarter inch NPT fitting to work with on the other side. Weld came out looking pretty good. I'm confident there won't be any leak there. Yeah, so basically I just have to butt this thing right up here, hold it in place, then walk the TIG welder around that seam. And uh, I've got plenty of material on the bottom to work with, so probably won't be the prettiest TIG weld ever, but uh, Shouldn't be any problem to make that leak proof. Well, I'll take it. Not bad, I'm certain that one's not gonna leak. And both fittings are done here. Just a little bit warm, but I decided to hit them with the flap wheel. Uh, not, uh, didn't try and make it look flush. This is pretty thin material and I didn't wanna risk uh, grinding through it, but uh, I just basically ground the weld down pretty close to flush and then hit it with an orbital sander. But both sides are done. Looks pretty good underneath here. I think we're ready to put some fittings in this thing and uh, clean up our slats and fill it back up with our fluid. Okay, that was a dirty job. But, got all these slats cleaned up. You can see the, I got them upside down now, all the uh, marks are on the bottom. But everything's cleaned up and uh, reinstalled in the table. And we're ready now for the, uh, for the table fluid. Well, the main ingredients that we've added to our uh, concoction here is this uh, Fizan 20. We just added a little bit of that, and uh, this is a, basically keeps stuff from growing in the water. Um, this uh, sodium nitrite, nitrite with an I, not nitrate, uh, this is what keeps uh, rust from forming. And then we've added a little bit of green food coloring and that's to uh, cut down on the number of people that are waltzing into my shop and drinking the fluid out of my CNC table.
Okay guys, well, I'm gonna fast forward two days here. This project's not done yet. Um, so I came out the morning after, uh, filled this up with fluid, and there was a small puddle right here. And what that meant was that the, uh, the self-tapping sheet metal screws of the neoprene washers, one of those was allowing fluid down in this tube, it was running down here, and then coming out where these self-tappers were. So I drained the fluid again, and pulled all the self-tappers on this side because I didn't know which one was leaking. And then I shot a dab of silicone in each one, put them back in, and then filled it back up with fluid. Came out the next morning. There was a small puddle of fluid right under the center and the seam between the two pieces was wet. So at that point, I just kind of said, you know what, uh, I feel like I'm polishing a turd here. I'm gonna have to disassemble the two pieces. Uh, I'm sure they were leaking because I uh, undid all the neoprene screws on the one side and there was probably some preload in them from the welding that caused the seam to separate a little and at, You know at that point I just decided hey, I, I'm I don't want to mess with these anymore now I don't mean to talk bad about Langmuir's two-piece design. They're actually really well designed um, I assume that they had to do two pieces for shipping considerations, so they didn't have to pay an oversized fee uh, Now when I attempted to weld this thing in here uh, any welding is going to cause warp, warpage in sheet metal like this, but I didn't think it was going to be too bad because I was leaving everything bolted into place and I was using minimal filler rod and just using the TIG welder at really low amperage. And I mean, these aren't warped or buckled or anything like that, but there was probably, uh, the welding probably put just enough preload on them to cause just a minor separation. And I may have just been able to disassemble it and reseal it and put it back together, but I figured I was going to be fighting with the, the two-piece design from that point forward, and I, I just didn't want to waste any more time on it. So I have access to a pretty decent sheet metal shop in town. So I called them up this morning, sent them these dimensions, and a couple hours later they had this single-piece tray built for me. So this is also stainless steel. I had them put a cross break in it for rigidity and uh, also for drainage to the center. And uh, I had them put in a three-quarter NPT drain fitting. Otherwise, all the dimensions are the same as the, the Langmuir one. So, we're going to move forward with this. Okay, guys, it's been, uh, I don't know, three or four hours since I filled the table up, and we are leak-free. So that's great news. Uh, these slats were submerged in this fluid for about 48 hours before, because uh, I had, uh, during my two previous leak checks, <clears throat> and I don't see any rust forming anywhere on them. Uh, this this rust that's on the top here, I just never cleaned off when I uh, cleaned these things up. But you can see where I ran the grinder. I mean, right at the surface of the water level, I have some uh, some bright metal right there, and there's no rust there, uh, despite the fact that these things have been submerged for 48 hours. So uh, I have uh, pretty good confidence that this fluid's going to work good to limit the corrosion that goes on in here. But we'll come back here in about a week, uh, maybe two, and check and see if we've got any rust forming on those slats or if we've got any other kind of weird corrosion going on in here. Uh, but really, looks pretty good to me. I think it's going to work just based on what I'm seeing so far. We've got our one-piece tray done and uh, no leaks or anything like that, so it looks like our CNC table's back in business. Well, it has been, uh, I believe, one week, maybe six days, and still no leaks. And we are still completely rust-free. This is awesome. Even all this exposed metal, this sh uh, shiny metal where I ground off the mill scale and everything, all that is still, there's absolutely zero corrosion anywhere on there. So I'm giving this concoction a thumbs up. It uh, definitely works. I mean, it, uh, I don't have any stuff growing in here. I got a couple dead, dead bugs and things floating in here, but no rust and uh, no algae or scum or anything growing on here. So that's it. I'm, I'm happy with it. It was a pretty inexpensive mixture and I got enough to make up like you know, 500 gallons of this. So pretty much just a lifetime supply. So that does it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. I've uh, got my bumper video on my Nissan coming up here pretty quick.